Much has been said on the internet about Hans Urs von Balthasar's theology and his seemingly heretical proposition that there is a reasonable hope that all men are saved. I did a video on neo-universalism and I have it linked down below. So how did von Balthasar come up with his strange belief? According to him, after Jesus died on the cross, Christ's descent into hell was like a counterbalance of an elevator which plunges into the depths to lift everyone else up. But von Balthasar's take on Christ's descent into hell seems even more outrageous than his neo-universalism. And that will be the subject of this video. The Apostles' Creed says, He descended into hell. On the third day he rose from the dead. The Catechism of Trent makes it clear that Christ did not descend into the hell of the damned. Hell here signifies the secret abodes in which are detained the souls that have not obtained the happiness of heaven. The third kind of abode is that into which the souls of the just before the coming of Christ the Lord were received, and where, without experiencing any sort of pain, but supported by the blessed hope of redemption, they enjoyed peaceful repose. To liberate those holy souls, who, in the bosom of Abraham, were expecting a Savior, Christ the Lord descended into hell. So Christ descended into the bosom of Abraham, and not the hell of the damned. The bosom of Abraham's existence is a divine truth, and it's mentioned in Scripture. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Of this verse, Bishop Challoner explains, Abraham's bosom, it is the place of rest where the souls of the saints resided till Christ had opened heaven by his death. Scripture confirms that this is where Christ went when he descended into hell. In which also coming, he preached to those spirits that were in prison. Of this verse, Bishop Challoner says, Spirits that were in prison. See here a proof of a third place, or the middle state of souls. For these spirits in prison to whom Christ went to preach after his death were not in heaven, nor yet in the hell of the damned, because heaven is no prison, and Christ did not go to preach to the damned. Christ's descent into the bosom of Abraham was glorious, and it involved no suffering on his part. It was by his suffering during his passion and his death on the cross that he conquered death. His descent into the bosom of Abraham was to set the just captives free. But von Balthasar figured that scripture and Catholic teaching weren't quite right. He concluded that during the three days in the tomb, Christ went to the hell of the damned and experienced the full force of what would have awaited sinful mankind without a Redeemer, which was a complete rejection and abandonment by the Father and without any hope of mercy or reconciliation. So von Balthasar says Christ went into the hell of the damned and was without hope, and this is despite the fact that scripture tells us Always be ready to give a reason of the hope which is in us. Von Balthasar claimed that by suffering the worst that the hell of the damned had to offer, Christ bore the punishment humanity deserved, and in doing so he opened the door for a reasonable hope that all men may now be saved. But it gets much worse. Von Balthasar claimed that during his descent into hell, Christ's humanity and divinity were separated. He said that only Christ's divine nature descended into hell. But the Catechism of Trent says, Although his soul was separated from his body, his divinity was never parted from either his soul or his body. And the Catechism explains, Moreover, as Christ was true and perfect man, he of course was capable of dying. Now man dies when the soul is separated from the body. When, therefore, we say that Jesus died, we mean that his soul was disunited from his body. We do not admit, however, that the divinity was separated from his body. On the contrary, we firmly believe and profess that when his soul was disassociated with his body, his divinity continued always united to his body in the sepulchre and to his soul in limbo, or the bosom of Abraham. So, what did the so-called conservative Pope John Paul II do about von Balthasar? Did he excommunicate him? Did he reprimand him in any way? No. John Paul considered von Balthasar his favorite theologian. In fact, he intended to make von Balthasar a cardinal. However, von Balthasar died just a few days before actually becoming a cardinal. Of von Balthasar, Benedict XVI said, Meeting Balthasar was for me the beginning of a lifelong friendship I can only be thankful for. Never again have I found anyone of such a comprehensive theological and humanistic education as Balthasar and de Lubeck, and I cannot even begin to say how much I owe to my encounter with them. But why is this video on my cavalcade of questionable miracles and apparitions playlist? Well, it's because von Balthasar was the spiritual director of a very sketchy mystic named Adrian von Speer. 
Von Speer was a convert to Catholicism, and after her conversion she had visions of Christ's descent into hell, which contradicted Catholic tradition. She had a vision of Christ's suffering in the hell of the damned. Von Balthasar, however, liked her visions very much, and he crafted them into his novel theology, despite the fact it was contrary to scripture and Catholic teaching. Please recall that in Book 2, Chapter 18 of Ascent of Mount Carmel by St. John of the Cross, he deals with the harm that some spiritual directors may cause to individuals by their poor direction in regard to spiritual visions. St. John wrote, In trusting to these supernatural apprehensions and believing that they are good and come from God, both masters and disciples have fallen into great error and found themselves in dire straits. Now, does this remind you of the dynamic between Sister Faustina and Father Sapaco? Instead of telling Von Speer to pay no heed to any of her visions, Von Balthasar himself embraced them when he knew they were contrary to Catholic teaching. Instead of instructing her to reject the visions, he encouraged them. And during the period of 1944 to 1960, Von Speer dictated to Von Balthasar 60 books of spiritual and scriptural commentary. Von Balthasar, in turn, openly admitted that his own theological work was inseparable from Von Speer's. At least Father Sapaco didn't try to pass off Faustina's musings as his own. So, Hans Urs von Balthasar, who was John Paul II's favorite theologian, was little more than a stenographer for a sketchy mystic. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back again within a week with another one. But in the meantime, please check out my Facebook page and my Twitter page. Every day I post additional content that you won't find on this YouTube channel. And also, please pray for the church.